In this chapter, we're going to deal with the so-called classical mainline of the Marshall attack, which is based on 15 bishop e3. I'll show you how we get there, first of all. d5, e takes d, knight takes d5, knight takes e5, knight takes, rook takes c6, d4, bishop d6, rook back to e1, queen h4, g3, queen h3, which is pretty much in the main position of the Marshall where white has a lot of options, which we're going to be dealing with later, like rook e4 or queen to e2. Here it's about bishop e3, which in some ways is the most logical move. White just tries to develop his pieces. Bishop to e3, knight goes to d2, then he wants to go a4. And the burden is on black to prove he has enough counterplay on the king side to balance his missing pawn. Bishop g4 is a good way to start, attacking the queen and developing the piece, making room for the rook on e8. And white should react, go to d3. If he goes to d2 after bishop f3, he'd already have a serious problem, so d3 in order to have queen f1 if necessary. This is slightly more accurate. <clears throat> Black goes rook a8. If a dog with rook to put on e8, always take the a rook, because the f rook might be useful supporting f5, f4, and then attack on the f file later on. Anyway, rook a8, white continues his plan to develop his pieces, he goes knight d2. And here we have the first so-called critical tabia for this variation. Historically, black has been going rook e6 most of the time, and after a4, <clears throat> Early they were trying things like pawn takes, rook takes, a4, f5, which leads to a huge mess. But as far as I know, white is better in the end, and it does look a bit unhealthy to ruin your pawn structure like that. And people don't really do that anymore, and I can't recommend it. But the modern treatment of this position was queen to h5. Just improving the position of the queen slightly, avoiding getting hit by queen f1, clearing the square...
having opened the A file already. <clears throat> the point is that, that, that if black goes rook e8 here, which is certainly a playable move, white has bishop takes d5, queen takes d5, queen g2, and black is sort of forced to exchange queens. This ending is not that bad for black. In general, all these endings with a pawn down but the bishop pair are, let's say, tenable, but it's not that much fun to play, and if anybody has winning chances here, it's white, so I wouldn't go for it unless I had to. But that's a good thing about the marshal, even if things go wrong a bit, you end up with an ending like that, which should be very much playable. Anyway, we don't have to go for this, because bishop h3 is a better move here. Harassing the queen yet again. Here comes a standard trick to watch out for when playing black, the, the queen actually doesn't have to move, but white instead goes bishop with d1, counter-attacking the black queen. Which should go to f5, since we don't really want to exchange anything yet. And now white goes queen e2, planning to consolidate with queen f3. This is a position that has been discussed at the highest levels. Games between... Leiko and Kramnik, and later Wang Hao beat Grishuk with white in it, and leads to very forcing play, the analysis you can find on the DVD. In general, the conclusion is that black is fine after a c5, knight to f3, bishop to f4, very important little trick. White should go queen d2, knight e3, pawn takes, bishop h6. And the situation does get very messy, and it continues much further from here. But Check the analysis or ask your silicon friend. Black is very much fine here because the pawn on e3 is too weak. And white has some problems with coordination. So these are the, the two main lines after a4, which white has his, at his disposal. And for the time being, it looks like no worries for black in either of those. So people started wondering how they could exploit queen h5 from the white side. And what they came up with, instead of a4, is to go bishop c2. And Ponomayev was the first to play this move, and he used it to beat Leko. Curiously, a week after that game, I was black against Ponomayev. So I had a long look at this line, and I tried to improve on Leko's play. He played f5, f3. It's a similar idea to the one from Kremnik in the queen f1, f3 line. White gives the pawn back, but in return he gets a bishop and takes control of the, of the center. Leiko took on f3, but then he was slightly worse after takes, takes, I think bishop f2, <clears throat> or bishop d2, I can't remember. But in general, we don't want this position. So my new move, which I still think is correct against Ponomayev, was bishop to h3. Just keeping the pieces on the board and planning to go f4, continuing the attack. He played bishop f2, and here I didn't find the the right way to proceed in preparation. I play queen g6, which is a reasonable move. I'm just planning to go h5, h4, maybe use the f4 square for one of my pieces on a good day. And I still think that black has reasonable compensation, but white gets to exchange some rooks on the e-file, and he's the one who can be better, let's put it that way. But then some months later, the Armenian martial expert, Sargisyan, was also working for Arunian, who's, as we know, one of the big heroes in the martial nowadays, and came up with the right solution, which is quite stunning in my opinion. I hadn't thought of it, even though I checked his position, obviously, also with computer assistance. He went knight to f4, which is obviously a typical theme in the martial, but here it looks like white can just take it, and he's not getting checkmated anytime soon. The point is that after bishop takes f4, it's very surprising, but there is really no way for white to keep the extra piece. He has to deal with the immediate threat of queen g5, he should go bishop g3, and black goes queen g5 anyway. Now let's say knight f1, no, white can also include the check first. Black plays very slowly h5, intending to increase the pressure on the g5. There's really no way white can keep his extra piece, or even get away with control of the position and extra pawn. <clears throat> Look up the analysis or check the position, but black is fine here and this is the way to go, which for me was a big discovery. I couldn't believe, well first of all I couldn't believe I missed it myself and then I couldn't believe that it actually works. 
when Sargis M played this knight f4, but it does. And it solved pretty much the problems we had in the Queen h5 camp. So for the time being, people with black should be reasonably happy with the old main line. I don't see where white can offer an advantage. The lines to be well prepared in are after Queen h5, a4, rook e6, moves Queen f1 and Knight f1, which we've covered, and after Knight d2, Queen h5, Bishop c2, <clears throat> f5, this position I was just talking about, after Knight f4. These are the critical lines and the ones you should have a look at. And then again, if one forgets, one is never lost in the Marshal, one just has a pawn down and has some counterplay, but still, it's better. Better to know, and you don't have to think over the board. Okay, thanks for listening. Bye.